Hello there, thank you very much for joining today, in this new how to create Azure Virtual Machine video. Today we will learn about how to create virtual machine. Now, before we get into the specifics, there are few things worth pointing out, if you are new to Azure. The good news is that, lifting and shifting, your apps or workloads onto a virtual machine, or multiple VMs in Azure, as part of infrastructure as a service, can be achieved without re-architecting them, or writing new code. Azure literally becomes your physical data center in the cloud. Azure provides a comprehensive range of VMs that can scale and perform across Linux distros and Windows Server-based applications. Azure VM families are optimized for compute, memory, and storage-intensive workloads. Azure also gives you the choices of CPUs and GPU from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA to take advantage of the latest hardware innovations. So, let's talk about creating the virtual machines. If you don't have an Azure subscription, please click on the info to create a free Azure account before you begin. To begin with, sign into the Azure portal at portal.azure.com. And you can see here, I can either go to Azure Services, or I can search for virtual machines, and this will take us to the virtual machine landing page. And you can see that, I don't have any virtual machines here, because this is the free subscription that we created in the previous video. So, at this point let's just go ahead and create virtual machine. This will bring up a nice easy wizard to get us started, and you can see towards the top, we have got seven different sections like disk, networking, management, so and so. And at the bottom here, as we go down, it's going to ask us all the different questions about what our virtual machine configuration is going to look like. So, the first thing is subscription. I only have one, which is the free subscription that we created in the previous video. And in your case, just select the right subscription where you are trying to build this virtual machine. Now we get to resource group. So I am just going to create new because I am going to create this to hold all of the different resources for my VM. So I am going to do demo VM RG01 and it's important to have a proper naming conventions. Next, we need to get the virtual machine name and I am going to call it Demo VM01. And now, I need to choose the region. It's always better to choose one which is closest, either to you, or to your end users. In my case, I am going to select Central India. And then, we have availability options. Since we are building just one VM, we are going to leave that as default. And now, we get to the point of image. You can either have a marketplace image, which we are seeing here, is an Ubuntu server, or you can upload your custom image. And we are not going to talk about custom images today. We are just going to create a marketplace virtual machine. So, I am just going to drop this down, and you can see here there are some common ones to get started with, like Red Hat, Windows Server, and so and so. In my case, I am going to choose Windows Server 2019 Data Center Gen 2. Now, we have done that, and we now want to choose the size of the virtual machine, so you can see that, it has given us a default already, the standard D2S v3 machine. But what I am going to do is, I can either click on the drop-down button, and it's going to give us the recommended images, or if you think none of them really fit your need, you can select, see all sizes, and from here we can select all different sizes of virtual machines. And at the top, we can see the most used by Azure users, but then it gives you all the synopsis of the different series, so you know, what does each series means, and you can see what the configuration, like the vCPUs, RAM, the data disks, the max IOPS and the estimated monthly cost. I am going to select the default one, D2SV3, and click select. And now, we need to set up our administrator account, this is going to be the local Windows admin account, and I am going to give in the username and password. We now have our administrator account set up. We are going to be using demo admin as our username and a strong password. Next, we get to inbound port rules. At this point, we can select whether or not any ports can be allowed from the public internet. So, if we click on the drop down, we could see couple of options, but for this demo purpose, I am selecting RDP port 3389. What it's going to do is set up the network to allow us to remotely connect to this virtual machine. In a production environment, you're probably not going to do this for your virtual machines and use something like Azure Bastion or Azure VPN service. We will talk about this some other day. So just for this demo, we are going to leave RDP open. 
and at the bottom you can choose whether or not you have a license on-prem to help you reduce the cost for Azure. I am going to leave it as I don't have a license with me. Now I am going ahead and hit next and we come onto disk's configuration page and the first thing you're going to notice is the OS disk. So when we select the OS disk type and this allows us to select between HDD, standard SSD and premium SSD. And it's going to change the entire performance of the operating system. Next is the encryption type. We are not going in depth detail here and we are going to leave that as default. And here at the bottom, you can see that you could add data disk to your virtual machine. We will do this in another video and we are going to leave that for now and move on to networking. So when you start creating a virtual machine, you can see it starts creating a network interface with virtual network, a subnet and a public IP. You can leave this as default and just go next next next, but if you need to make some configuration changes like an IP scheme that you want to go for, you can change the address range here from 10.0.0.0 to something different, or change the subnet name to something different as well. For example, I am going to change the name to demo VM VNet01 that make more logical sense. Since I don't want to use the entire address space, I will change to 10.1.1.024, which will get me 256 address, out of which 5 will be reserved by Azure. Also, I will not be using the entire address range, in my subnet, I will just use 32 addresses. The details about Azure Virtual Network will be covered in another video. Now we just hit OK, and we can see the changes here for the virtual network. Alright, let's go down so we can see the public IP, and if you hit create new, you can change it between whether it's static or dynamics. We are going to leave it as default. And then we have our network security group here, which we are going to leave as basic. And this is what allows us to start controlling the inbound ports, so we are going to leave this again with RDP open, and we are not going to use any kind of load balancer. Just go ahead and click next. Here in management, we can add things like monitoring, auto shutdown, backup, site recovery and OS update. Now let's move on to advanced. In advance, you can start adding things like scripts, extensions, so and so, and again for our first virtual machine, we are just going to move on and go to tags. I am going to leave tags as default as well, but in production it is highly recommended to add tags, a cost center for example, so you can easily see in billing, how much a department may be costing in Azure. But again, we are going to leave it as default, and then we are going to go to review and create, and at this point, it's just going to validate everything we have selected, to make sure we can create this virtual machine. You can review the cost, the configurations, and if you are happy with this you can just go ahead and hit create. Now, it will take some time to complete the deployment process. Wow! Now we have our first Azure Virtual Machine created, and the Windows Server 2019 is up and running. What we are going to do is, click on the resource group, and we can see all the things that come together to create this virtual machine. So we have the virtual machine itself, we have a virtual network, the public IP address, which let us connect to the RDP, or HTTP if it's a website, the network security group, so that we can write rules to allow or deny network traffic, and we have our network interface, for our VM to connect to the network, and the disk for our operating system. So we have everything created, let's dive in and have a look at our virtual machine. We can see the VM is up and running, we got the public IP address assigned. And on the left hand side you can see all the settings for your virtual machine, networking, disk, security. Most of them, we have seen while setting up the virtual machine, but from here you can dig into more details of these settings. At this point, we can just go ahead and connect to our new virtual server. So I am going to hit connect. As we can see here we have got RDP, SSH, Bastion. Because it's Windows, I am going to choose RDP, and then select download RDP file. There we go. The RDP file is downloaded. Let's open that up, and select connect. And at this point we need to give in the admin username, and password that we created earlier. There we go. We have connected to the Windows server, and it looks and feels just like we were on premises. If you like this video, please hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you, see you on another video.